What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Max Afterburner channel. Another day, another Chinese satellite flying over Montana. How rude. How rude of you, China. And China says it's a civilian balloon. Nothing to worry about, nothing to see here. <laughs> so today we're gonna break down what's actually going on. I'm gonna give you some updates, some behind the scenes information from my opinion on what I think's happening. But before we do that, if you would, if you just feel inspired, if you dominate that like button, it would mean a lot to me. Let's dive in. All right, so the Pentagon's response to what's happening, they're basically saying they've been tracking this satellite for a few days. Wait, you've known about this for a few days? <laughs> so let's show the flight path. This is the flight path of that balloon. Essentially went north from China, went up and around Alaska, down the southern coast of Alaska into Canada, and then down into the western United States. So you're asking yourself, why? Why would China do this? Well, I think they're kind of sneaking it in through the side. They're sneaking it in <laughs> in a path that doesn't, maybe trigger some of the same alerts or they wanted to see some stuff in Alaska. They were missing Alaska. They wanted to see some Alaskan salmon, so they swung it up through Alaska. <laughs> Either way, this bad boy is flying over some sensitive sites, and the reason why the sites are so sensitive are it's a lot of the U.S. nuclear arsenal that is being flown over. So China, we see you. We know what you're doing. And then the Pentagon went on to say they haven't shot this thing down yet because they haven't found a fighter pilot that uh, can shoot it from that high of an altitude. No, I'm just kidding. They haven't shot it down yet because there is a, gonna be a debris field from this thing. So if they shoot down this balloon, the debris field is gonna be massive because it's gonna scatter to a lot of different parts and pieces. And when you look at this balloon, I'll throw up a picture of it, you can see that there is a solar array at the bottom of it. So that solar array, I mean, you don't want shards of that stuff, the different metals and potentially some toxic substances inside of that. You don't want that falling over farmland. You don't want that to be in anywhere close to any livestock or people that are on the ground. So I think it's a good call that they're choosing not to shoot this thing down yet. And again, they're saying with very high confidence, this is from an unnamed official at the Pentagon that this is an actual Chinese spy balloon. And again, meanwhile, China's like, I don't know what you're talking about, man. Uh, that was a tourism balloon flying at 100 miles above the earth. <laughs> it's not actually 100 miles above the earth, it's somewhere around 26 miles above the earth. And now let's get into some details about the actual balloon. So helium is used to fill these things up just like your average party balloon. So kind of interesting, even NASA uses the same type of technology, just, just helium to get it up to extremely high altitudes. And these are used for weather balloons and obviously spy balloons, or as China likes to call them, civilian, let's go have some fun balloons or whatever it is that they're trying to use it as an excuse. But these things are gonna get up to around 26 miles above the earth. So 26 miles, 42 kilometers, and the crazy thing is that these can carry a lot of weight. So this can carry somewhere around 3,600 kilograms, which is 8,000 pounds. So you're asking yourself, Ryan, well, what, what would it be carrying? Well, I'm glad that you asked. This thing is probably carrying a massive amount of detection equipment. So basically things that can sniff the air, things that can take photographs, anything that you can think of that would be used to just gather sensitive information from military sites, that's exactly what this thing was built for. But it's just kind of wild to think about, right? Flying over the US is 8,000 pounds of something. Definitely a little sketch. So why would China send these balloons? Well, as they're probably saying, they're just checking on snow conditions in Montana so they can update people on you know, how good the skiing is going at Big Sky right now. <laughs> So the balloons flying over those sensitive bases that we talked about, you know, Wyoming, Montana, South North Dakota, all the different areas where there's tons of sensitive sites for the US military. So gathering information there is kind of a no brainer for China, right? They're trying to get more information on our nuclear arsenal, more information on our readiness as well. But also here's something to think about. And this is kind of bonus information we're getting towards the end of the video. So you get the bonus information. When you think about things like this, it's obvious that we're gonna detect it. China knows, like they're sitting in there war rooms, they're sitting in their information rooms, seeing all the different things happen. They're like, okay, we know the US is gonna detect this balloon around this time. So what I start to think about is what's the deception here? Why is China okay with us detecting this balloon? Well, maybe there's something else going on. Maybe they're like, hey, look over here while they start doing something in the Taiwan Straits to kind of disrupt some of the defenses in Taiwan. So I like to think about when something obvious like this happens, it's kind of like saber rattling. That's what it's called in like political relations. It's a way to distract from other things as well. So 
you got to keep your eyes on the prize and you got to think about what is the enemy actually trying to do. I mean, there was a visit from our Secretary of State that was planned to happen right around the exact same time. So the fact that China sent it, it's kind of like they're testing the US, testing us to see where our boundaries are at. So I think the best thing to do here is set some firm boundaries. And then some concerns from people are coming up about you know, the height of this thing. So the fact that it's up as high as it is, it's not gonna interfere with commercial airliners, even though airline pilots have reported that they can see this thing. And now let's get into some bonus information on what's the response as far as from a fighter aircraft perspective. So F-22s have launched to just kind of be that calm, cool, collected presence around where this thing is. And I think it's a great idea. Some missions that I did were called Operation Noble Eagle, where I would fly over sensitive sites in the F-15E, and we would get refueled and essentially set up what's called a CAP, a combat air patrol, where you just kind of patrol around an object. And you're just making sure that everything stays cool as a cucumber. You're fully loaded out and you're ready to go if anything were to happen so you can respond in any situation. The last one I did was for a SpaceX launch. It was just incredible to sit there and watch this rocket launching off. And you had a tanker, a dedicated tanker. And in this case, they've got KC-10s, which are helping to aerial refuel these F-22s. So you can take you know, a normal flight time of, let's say, two hours or so that an F-22 can stay airborne. And you can extend that essentially indefinitely as long as the pilot can stay awake and keep that pilot up there so that they can respond in any situation. And then what you do is you call, it's called a, a relief. So a relief formation will come in, take the place of the next formation. And it's essentially this rolling patrol that just keeps someone up there to monitor the situation. And I think that's a great thing to do up there. I mean. You know, China, who knows what they have inside this thing. So I think just monitoring it, keeping sensors on it at all times is just the way to go. Now, when you think of the altitude of this thing, it's up there. So it's at 26 miles. The F-22, the published top altitude of the F-22 is roughly 10 miles. You're looking at somewhere around 60,000 feet, but uh, there's obviously other ways to extend that range. Personally, what I think is the pilot, he or she should just be be ready with their 20 mic mics that can just pull up and shoot their gun up another like 16 miles. That, that'd be, that would be epic. That pilot would go down in fighter pilot history as uh, the best shot of all time. But when it comes to patrolling, it, it's all about just having the ability to respond in any situation. And I think it's good that we've got these F-22s up there that are ready to handle things. I mean, I did patrols for President Obama and it was kind of the same thing. I remember flying around Chicago while speeches were going on and just making sure that nothing weird was gonna happen. And you're sitting there, you're watching these little airplanes take off, you're watching all these other aircraft and you're just making sure that everybody is kind of following the correct flight path. And that's what these pilots will be doing as well. They'll just be monitoring this thing. And who knows, maybe there comes a time when the Pentagon says, all right, it's over an area where we're comfortable with it, you know, being shot down. And if that happens, I'm, I'm hoping that it's over the ocean. I'm hoping somehow we can get this thing out over the ocean. But ultimately, it's just nice to have options. And again, it goes back to China's intentions. You know, what are they doing? They're testing us. They're testing us to see what we can do, right? They could get the same information from spy satellites, but instead they're throwing up this balloon and they're kind of like, what you got? You know, let's see what you got. And it's just an interesting time for them to do that with all the tensions with Taiwan, with the visit from our secretary of state about to happen. So again, I hope that we don't get distracted, but I'm glad that we are responding in the way that we are. I would say, don't worry about this thing. We've got the America's best fighter pilots up there in F-22s, taking care of business, making sure that we're all safe. So I hope that helps you sleep well at night. I know it helps me sleep well at night. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. It means a lot. The best compliment you can give me is just watch another video or share this video with a friend, share some of my other videos. It would mean a ton. I would greatly appreciate that. Most of all, thanks for being here. Have a great day.